Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to be colouring in this one today. This is Ken Matsuda. So you all voted for this one. Or the majority vote was for this one. And the page I'm going to do is this fish. How beautiful is that? Now there is a reference in the back of this book. And it's just here. So this is the reference of his painting, I'm guessing. So it's got some pinks and greys in there. Some greens and teals. A bit of red and pinks little tiny bit of orange and yellow on the head that I can see. I'm going to go for those sorts of colours the best I can. So the palettes I've picked out to do this are the Prima Watercolour Pastel Dreams, the Prima Decadent Pies, and then I've pulled out my Arteza set just in case there's a colour I can't find in the Prima set because there's more in this Arteza. This is the 36 set of colours. And then I've just pulled out some metallic colours by Renaissance um, just to use at the very end. I have to excuse, I've just been having a coughing fit. I think this is the sort of fourth or fifth take. <laughs> <coughs> I have to keep stopping to cough. Um, the brushes I'm going to be using are the Princeton Neptune brushes. Now this is a size 12 round. And this is a size four round. Now, when I first started watercolouring, I had a few comments because when I have my water out, I have my water like this and I leave my brushes in whilst I'm painting. Now, a couple of people commented saying, oh, you, sh you shouldn't leave your brushes in the water. But I wasn't sure why and I thought, oh, they'll be fine. <coughs> But what it has done, I've found, is it's put a little kink on my brush. So you might, I don't know if you can see, but the slightly turning to the right. It's not straight like it should be to a point. Um. So yeah, if I get any more in the future, I'll try my best not to leave them in water, guys. I'll take your advice on board, okay. <laughs> I'm a very clumsy artist, should we say. <coughs> Right, I'm going to get straight into it. So I have got a cloth at the side of me just so I can wipe off any excess water on my brush because what you don't want to do in this book is lay down too much water because although it does take it okay, if you put too much down, it, it won't be the best. Let's just say that. So let's get some of these colours activated. Let's bring you in. So on these pages with watercolour, I am going to bob around the page. So you might see me working on here and then suddenly coming down here. That's because I need to allow time for this section to dry before going back in with some things. I'm going to zoom you more back in on the fish because we're going to start with the fish and the head of the fish. So I'm going to start with the Prima colours over here and I'm going to choose this really pale pink to start with. And I'm going to use my size 4 brush for this. I'll just grab my cloth so that it's at the side of me. So that I can always wipe off and put my water over here. So let's get this colour going. So how are we all today? Apart from my coughing fits that I keep having, I'm fine. I won't cough for like 5 days and then all of a sudden... It'll feel like someone's just set it off and I just can't stop coughing them for about 20 minutes. <laughs> so on the reference picture, there was little pops of pinks around here on the belly. I need to water that down a bit. Around here on the belly and the other side, as well as some greys thrown in there as well. And also there's white areas left on the reference picture. There's areas where it's been left white. So I hope I'm just leaving that little... You can make your own shapes that you want to leave out. And I'm going to just leave that little bit of white there. I'm going to do a similar thing on the other side of the belly. Let's water this down a bit. So over here. <coughs> I do apologise for my throat. I don't know what set it off. I really do not know. 
So when this is dry, that's when I'm going to pop the bits of grey over the top. If I try and put it in now, it'll just all merge into the pink and you, I don't want that to happen. So also on the reference picture, there was pops of pinks in the fins. So I'm going to go ahead and pop some in there as well. Oh gosh, it's irritating me now, this frog in my throat. There are little pops. I'm going to do that. I like just getting watercolours out sometimes. Sometimes I use them a bit as a base, so I'll go back over with shadows, with pencils. And sometimes I just like to do the whole page with watercolour and just be a bit more free, so to speak. Pop a bit on the end there. There we go. And then, while we're letting all that selection dry at the top, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit because I'm going to put some of this pink in the flowers. So there's like one, two, three, four, five little petal heads here that I'm going to pop a little bit of this pink into. So just randomly. So we are going to get some greys in there as well and also we want to leave some little bits white i'm losing the light today it's like i've not got my lamp on it feels as though i've not got my lamp on maybe i'm just sat in the shadow can you see my shadow moving across the yeah it's annoying so if you do decide to follow along you don't have to place the pink in the exact same places that I'm placing it. Just do as you feel fit. There's no right or wrong way to place your colours with watercolour. I think it's all about just having fun. Just have fun and express it the way you want to. Last little flower over here. I think my throat should settle down in a little minute. Don't worry, guys. I won't spend the whole video clearing my throat. Hopefully, <laughs> she says. And there is that. All the flowers have I missed any? It's my usual trick missing. I think this is like a little bud here, so I'm going to pop a little bit of pink just on that there. Oh, there's a little bud here as well. They're easily missed. They're easily missed. And there we go. Definitely not any over here, is there? Nope. So, what I'm going to do next is go in with some of the more reddy orange colours on the head. So, I'm going to bring this back down. Perhaps pull my tripod down a little bit. It's easier than zooming out. It keeps it clearer as well, the picture clearer, rather than keep going zooming. Apologise. Stay still, camera. Stay still. Right. So, let's get some oranges and reds. Now, I don't want a red to be too dark. I want quite a a pale, paler red. If you was colouring with a coloured pencil, it would be your sort of... Is it lake geranium or geranium lake type of shade in your coloured pencils? That's the type of red that you want for this. That's if you're going... For the same colours as the, as the reference like me so with this i'm just going to go around the bottom of them a bit first because i do want to keep some white areas like random shapes again now there's a bit more a bit of orange and a bit of yellow towards the top so if you leave those ones free maybe we can Bring a bit of red up there. If we leave those top ones free, we can add some oranges in. That can have a bit of red down here. There we go. I 
do want this to be quite defined in these areas that's why I've left I could have added more water if I wanted it looser but I'm just trying to get those outer edges defined and then you can make everything else more washed out at the end once you've sort of mapped out oh that's what I'm doing so it looks like this is the eye oh, I forgot to look what colour the eye is on the reference but this is the eye here so don't want to go in with red there don't think I do anyway <laughs> don't think I do now as you keep going on you can tell I've not added any more red to my brush yet now you can use this to your advantage so when your brush is running out of colour and pigment you can do some lighter areas because it's nice to have the variation so you can just carry on making some areas paler I will probably add more depth into some areas at the end as well once it's dry you can sort of it dries lighter so you can sort of see where you would want to put a bit more darkness in Gonna add some more water to my brush. I think. See how it's really pale now I've added the water. This section here, <clears throat> where it's going onto the belly, this is where it will be fading into greens and teals. So I'm just gonna really randomly pick out a few areas with the red it's almost like you're just dropping dabs of of red here and there a bit there even i'm gonna add a bit a bit more up there can you hear that noisy motorbike going past there's been a lot lately of the off-road quad, quad bikes acting really dangerously on the road where we live awful it's like they don't care at all like they'll purposely intimidate you on the road those types of those types of people <laughs> right i've just noticed as well you up this is a fin here, so I'm going to add more of that pink that we used. Add a little bit down here. Well, I've got the pink still here somewhere, just a little bit. Here and there. There we go. I think now. I'll try and mix a grey. So to mix a grey, I'll bring you back down to the head of the fish. I'm going to mix a grey to go in on these fins. So I think I am just going to have to use my black watercolour and water it down into a grey. I have a white that I could mix with it, but it's not very good. I've not got much of it left. I could try and mix a little bit in, but there's really not much of it left. So I'm going to water down my black quite a lot. And if you water that down enough, it it will be a grey, basically. It will be like a grey. <clears throat> That's just my palette tapping away as I'm as I'm mixing it. I'm just gonna wipe my brush on there and have a look at the colour. That's looking all right. So then I'm gonna add a bit into here. Still want to keep some white areas, so don't put it everywhere that where there's white space because we do want to keep some areas white. And then don't forget, once it's dried, we can always go in with darker areas as well. Like definitely in here would be a bit darker where I'm going now with this grey. We can afford to go into them areas darker when it's all dry. <clears throat> it's 
It's really quite relaxing doing watercolour. I really do think it is. You're a lot looser with your colours. A lot looser. So I'm going to pull you down while we do the other little fin up here. Again, leaving out some of the white space in certain places. My belly's rumbling again. I've only just eaten. Maybe it's digesting. <laughs> I'm back on my diet as of today. So I'm still happy at the moment, but I might get a great chin snappy later. <laughs> Does anybody else find they get grumpy when they're dieting? And people, people always say, oh, don't put yourselves on diets because restricting yourself isn't good. But if I didn't restrict myself, I wouldn't be able to get an a slimmer, <laughs> basically. That's what I'm saying, because I have no control. <clears throat> right, I'm going to move down. I don't know if this is dry actually yet because I've only just done it. So I'm going to, look at that nail, I've scratched it. Ah. <laughs> um... I'm going to move on to the flowers because the flowers have some grey in them. So I'm going to do the flowers first and add this grey into them in random places. Let's dab that off. So on the flowers, I'm just going to try and get into the grayscale areas first and then pull it out a little bit. Again, I want to keep some white areas in here. Can you hear an emergency vehicle going past? That is on my video again. <laughs> I don't think I could get one video filmed without one going past. Never happens. Never happens, guys. Don't forget, if you feel like anything can be deepened up, we can do that once it's all dry. So don't look at it and think, oh, at least a bit washed out, a bit dull. You can go back in at the end when it's dry. Oh, a bit too much water there. Suck it up a bit. I think the colours on this one are lovely. When I first saw the fish, I thought, oh, lovely oranges I could do. Lovely oranges. And then when I looked at the reference, I was like, oh, that's so much nicer. <laughs> I'll just go for whatever Ken Matsuda's done. So that's what I've tried to do in this book, is just sort of emulate what he's done. So you don't have to do it like that, but I really like doing that. You can see I'm keeping it very washy to start off with. You can always add, but it's harder to take away. You can take away a watercolour just by cleaning your brush off and, um, and uh, you know, picking it back up, picking the pigment back up. But it's still harder to do than if you just add colours slowly and gradually. And the last little flower. Hear yeah, my belly. I wonder if it's picking up that <laughs> that rumbling on the on the uh, microphone. Right now, of course, we are going to go in with some deeper grey on these, but we have to allow it to dry first. So I'm going to move around to doing some else. But first, I'm going to shut them curtains because we've got the sun shining through. Now, if I move out the way, you can see this horrible glare over here where the sun is shining through. We've not got the lighting today, guys. <coughs> that. Hopefully that's a bit better. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. So, now I'm going to go for... Back to the top of the fish's head, I'm going to add some of them oranges and yellows just to the top. So I'm going to clean off my brush, make sure all that dirty grey is off. So we wouldn't want to do that. 
I found a lovely shade of orange in the pastel set. This one here is lovely. It's like an orangey yellow almost and I'm going to use that one because it is beautiful. Beautiful. So I'm going to add it to the top here. A little bit here and a touch there because we're going to add a bit of yellow right at the top and again on this one I'm going to add a bit of yellow into there see how when you allow the colours to dry first they don't run into each other so you can get this more defined more control over it just by adding little bits here and there I think that's just about all I'm going to do with the orange because there's really not much of it on the reference but just let me wash my brush off a little bit merge that in a little bit better There we go. I want to quickly look at the reference at the back because I do want to see what colour he's done that eye. Just because. I'm doing the rest of the picture as he has. So I'm going to have a little look. There's the pages. Have a quick look, guys. Right. It's mostly like a blue. It's like a deep indigo in there and then a little tiny bit of orange. So I'll get the orange back and I'll pop a tiny bit of orange around here, just like that. I think I've gone outside the line there. If you clean your brush off, make sure it's really clean, then you can just use it to pick up that colour and then dab it with a cloth. It should come up a bit bit better than it was doing right so now i'm going to move on to putting some greens into the belly of the fish i'm going to just zoom you out a little bit bring you up here so i'm going to start off with a really light color at first so the lightest sort of shades that i've got are in the pastel collection so these three sort of colours here I'm going to put some of them in and then once it's dry I'm going to go in with some colours from my Arteza palette which are darker so we can put the darker ones over the top so again picking out random areas really random areas you can be a bit looser with this it's a larger area so if you want to add more water and make it more of a wash like that rather than this is more opaque because it's got less water when we put more water it's more it's looser shall we say over here it's more of a wash which i think i'm gonna go for more of a washy over here that's too much of a wash <laughs> Get, the, get it right, just to get it right. And then we do want to follow it through into here, some of these colours. Just a little bit down there, and on, even onto the leaves. You can barely see it because it is really faint. And put a bit more colour there. Just so it looks like a continuation going into the foliage. If that makes sense. Right, so I'm going to add some different tones now. So I'm going to pop a different colour. This one's slightly darker, I think. Slightly different green. And it doesn't matter if this runs into that colour. That's why I've picked it out now. It's just like a slightly dar darker colour. So I can sort of pick out more of the grayscale with this one. It's 
still remembering to leave some patches of white here and there as well. Now I'm going to go into the more of a, it's more of a light blue shade, this one that I'm picking next. More of a pale blue sort of shade and again picking out some of the more grey scaled areas. being very loose on the belly of this fish being a bit more loose and free with the colours I was off screen a little bit then, but what I was doing is just pulling some of the blues down here, like I did with the greens. Forgetting how zoomed in I am, aren't I? You can see some of the colour has come over onto the page as well. I'm going to get rid of that. So some of the blue there. So I've cleaned my brush off and just pick it back up again like that. And I've done it over here as well. Don't know how I've done it over here on the page, but I have, so I'm just gonna clean that up off my page. <laughs> you can't see it, it's off camera. But we'll clean that up as well. <laughs> what am I like? I'm clumsy, I said at the start, didn't I? I'm clumsy. Right. Get some more blue, this time more opaque. There's some of the grey scale at the bottom. I think the last page I did in here I might have done with gouache. I was trying to remember. Gouache you can get more opaque. Even more opaque than watercolours. I'm going to add some more water to my brush now and just pull out some of them areas with the water. Too much water, Christy, too much water. But it really is about playing around and seeing what you like. You know, it is somewhat forgiving watercolour to a certain extent. It is somewhat forgiving. And just now I've got the darkness down that I want, I'm just making it appear looser rather than so what's the word what's the word <laughs> what's the word i'm looking for pronounced no that's not the word but it's similar similar sort of word to what i'm going for see i'm so relaxed and so in the moment that just words just disappear out my head you just go so I'm pulling out some of that colour now so it's creating almost like a blue wash throughout the rest of the body and because that section's quite wet now I am going to add the grey down on this bottom fin. So the grey colour I had from earlier. Pop some into here. Like that. I've just spilt a bit as well, haven't I? Clean the mess up, Kirsty. Clean cloth. 
Nope. Still running. What happens when you put too much water down? There we go. Oh, it's looking quite nice. So while this part's drying now, I definitely don't want to go into that area yet. But I can go up here with the yellows. So I'm going to find a nice yellow. Out of my Arteza palette this time, I think. I think that's where we've got the nicest yellow. And I'm going to pop some up here. Definitely here. Let's get more pigment going on there. Maybe a few random spots further down the neck. There we go. I think now I'm going to darken up some of the roses. So the grey and some of the roses I'm going to deepen up in the grey-scaled areas. So the grey that I had, I'm just going to add more black to it. Hopefully this will do the job. Let me test at the side of me. Might have to water it down a bit. It's hard to get the right the right colour. Oh, right in the darkest spots, if I just almost put a little tiny bit here in there. I am just picking out those most grayscale areas. Now this bit, in the centre there, I'm going to clean off my brush. Because I do just want to make it a little bit looser on the edges. So it's not as harsh. There we go. You can see how it's coming together a bit now. I don't think I'm going to get all this finished in this setting, but I will do um, a part two if you want me to finish it on camera. I can do a part two, that's no worries. Probably be the start of next week before it gets up, unless I have any free time at the weekend. But with it being the weekend now, I don't know if I'll get much done. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, I don't want it as harsh. You can remove some of that colour as well. There's another bud here that I missed as well. How did I miss that bud? <laughs> I think you can be really creative with watercolours. I love it. I need to do more with them. You think it's a faff getting them out and, and getting all your water out and your cloths and, you know, but once you've got them out, I love it. I'm going to make it a thing now, guys, so you heard it. You heard it, you have to, you have to make me do it now. I'm going to do at least one page a month with my watercolours fully. Fully like this, no pencil work. I'm not going to put any pencil work into this. It's just going to be all watercolour. Once a month. <laughs> Let me get around here. But pretty much, because these are grayscale gray illustrations, how you would work with a colouring page, with pencils, where you would put the darkest colours in the grey-scaled areas, you just do the same way watercolours. Put the darkest colours in the grey-scaled areas. I think the key is to just do things bit by bit with watercolour. And make sure you're giving areas time to dry before going back in. You know, don't try and do it all at once. I think that's the thing with watercolour. You can't do it all at once. I used to have a heat gun, a heat tool, heat gun. Uh, I used to have a heat tool that I used when I was filming. 
um, but I just find it easier to do like this where I'm letting one area dry and going back to it and then you've got not got the noise of the heat gun as well on the camera and it does when you do use the heat tool heat gun it does tend to curl up the edges of paper sometimes as well so I did give that one away <laughs> I give my heat tool away I just thought I enjoy doing it this way Because if you're not using much water, it doesn't take that long to dry naturally anyway. It's when you soak in your pages that it takes a long time to dry. But we're not going to do this. We're not going to soak the page, should I say, in a cologne beat like this. Because it's not, it's not the thinnest paper, but it's not the thickest paper this big. So you do want to be careful still. There we go, and even still, because like I say, everything dries a lot lighter. Let me zoom you out so you can see what we've got so far. Yeah, everything dries a lot lighter, so even if we go back to doing something up here, and then once this is dry, you think, oh, you know, I'd, I quite like it a little bit darker in a little tiny place. You can go back in again, or you can even... Some people, when they're doing the watercolour in, they put little details in with micron pens or any other sort of pen that doesn't smudge. So these are my go-to. If you wanted any fine little details or any dots of black, you could, right at the very end when everything's dry, put in details with that because these are smudge proof. So they aren't going to go anywhere once they're down. Really lovely these, they're my favourite pens. Um, But that's what we've got so far i'm gonna go back in on the belly now with some more like grass green types of colors mixed in there particularly coming down from here into here because we've got a lot of sort of grass green pine greens what are going to be coming up into all the leaves over here you can see where i've put the watercolor there <laughs> let's try and lift it off because it's going to annoy me let me clean my brush I think I need some clean water actually with all that grey in it. But yeah, let's try and lift this little mark up. What's it in me? It probably won't come out now. No, I don't think it will. We'll just have to put up with a little mark on the page. Should be fine. <laughs> so for the grass green types of pine green colours, I'm going to have to go to my Arteza set. Very milky set. But I'm looking at these two colours down here. Yeah, these two colours here. So excuse my monkey palette, but that's what we're going to go for. I might turn my beat round a little bit. Should we turn it round a little bit? I'm trying to get the best angle on it for you. Because it's not the best, not at the best angle so far. The problem is when you get your watercolour palettes out and you have your water and everything else on your desk, it's hard to manoeuvre books. But let's pull that down, I'll try. And move my tripod over there, then we can get on the belly a bit better, that's it. So again, I'm going to start off with my lighter of the two greens. That's just the way that I've found works best for me. Let's water it down a little bit. So I'm going to start in some areas up here with it. So pop in a punch of that colour down up here. Still trying to leave some white space white because we are gonna want to keep in some whiteness if at all possible and it adds some more water to that and lifts some up it's a bit much <laughs> it's a bit much But yeah, I did want to add some of this green in. I think it's really, really nice. And then it'll flow. The colours will flow from the fish into all the foliage. Now I've just cleaned my brush off. And I've just got water on my brush now. Because I'm just going to 
sort of loosen those edges up a little bit. That's it. Let's get some more down here. Oh, that's too much, but we'll loosen it out. We can add water and pull it through. We just want to add little areas. Let's clean off the brush and pull all that green through a little bit better. Oh, that's my daughter's phone inside of me. now while we come down here and we're gonna do we're gonna pull this green through all throughout and then we're gonna add the other colors into it when once it's dry so it will look sort of one-dimensional for a minute for a moment just really random like picking out the areas I'm not doing anything specific This number size 4 brush is really nice for getting into these little smaller areas as well. But still, even with the really small brush, you probably need a size 1 or a 0 to get those really tiny grass strokes. <laughs> I'm not fussed that it's gone over, we're not, you know, it's a really loose painting. Oh, emergency vehicle going past that I can hear. what do you think would you follow along with something like this where it's painting would you have the confidence to just add the color wherever i find it found it really therapeutic to be honest i sometimes sit here and think oh because you you because you've been really silent you best like you know talk for the video <laughs> but it's because i'm just so relaxed just so relaxed when i'm doing it I might get my daughter to do some painting with me. She's not, she's had a go at the pan pastels, which I posted a video up of her doing that. The little galaxy she was doing for her art project with pan pastels. She's obviously worked with pencils. Um, I think she's done a watercolour painting in school, but I, I haven't seen it. And I haven't seen her work with them at home or anything like that. So it'd be really quite nice to see her do it at home, I think. It's just hard to get that quiet time with just me and my eldest daughter sometimes because my youngest, my youngest two, they do want to get involved, but the more chaotic, shall I say, the more chaotic, so they might ruin something my eldest daughter's doing, shall we say. Um, yeah, just tends to turn into chaos in my eyes. Let's 
bring some up into those bits near where I want. Yeah, so most of this up here is greens, but it's sort of different tones of greens. Maybe a little bit of the teal brought into some of the leaves up here. But it is mostly like different tones of, of green. And white, of course. A lot of white space has been left into these paintings as well. So I do feel that in part two, because once I've done this little green section up here I'm going to end the video I do think in part two we will obviously be adding more colours into this um, I will put more darkness in them roses I think a little bit even though especially up here we've sort of got a few darker areas in these ones down here but this one's sort of dried a lot lighter so perhaps get some more depth in there Can I this is leaking though? That's why I like going off references because I want to I want to pick these colours myself. Well obviously the green I might have done for the leaves. But the fish, I want to done all them colours on the fish. And it is it has just turned out really beautiful like that. There's quite a lot of grayscale on these leaves up here. You can see how it's got a lot darker, the grayscale down here. So we'll probably go back in at some point as well to darken up all that with a darker shade of green. But you can see where I'm leaving all the white areas as well. Now some of them areas we will be going back into with different tones. But some of the space I am going to leave white. Might be nice to put a bit more darkness on the tip of the leaf like that. And there we go, that's part one. And I'm going to have to leave it there, I think, an hour. I think we've been been here for about an hour. I think that's a big enough chunk that I've done there. It's beautiful, isn't it? The colours on it. I particularly like the oranges on the head. I'm gonna bring this tripod up a little bit. But yeah, so that was part one. Part two will be putting in all the extra detail in. So there'll be a few more colours going in the body of the fish and quite a lot more colours in all the foliage down here and then I will add a little bit of metallic paint here and there but it's looking quite good it will be better when it's done and of course like all the other pages that I've completed in this book this one was one of them with a the watercolour um, I've called that one Kirsty after me Kirsty Koala and we had what did we have here 
show you about closing the page on that we had rosie the rabbit so we have been given them names so i want you to drop in the comment section down below what should we name this little fishy when we've done him in part two and then i will of course write its name on the bottom of there in part two so it can be something beginning with f i think that's the theme we've gone for so what, what would you think florence fish frankie fish can you think of anything else <laughs> anyway thank you so much for watching do you hit the thumbs up on the way out and subscribe if you're new and i'll see you in part two bye bye